Hey guys, it's Wednesday and I hope you're all doing well. And if you're not, may I suggest cooking steak and butter for dinner tonight? That always picks me up, so. But yes, lately YouTube has been recommending me these like Zoomer TikTok clip compilations, right? So it's sort of this like black pill, like commentary on TikTok compilations. And I noticed a few were of women, you know, following the hashtag trad wife trend and sort of talking about, you know, how they're so superior to other women because they know how to cook. You know, I, I haven't necessarily seen that lately, but I know for a fact that there are girls bragging about their ability to cook on TikTok. You covet red pill male attention, I assume. Um, and I understand the, the mindset and mentality because if I had less integrity, I'd be doing the same thing. And yes, I have integrity. I'm just saying that if I didn't have as much, I might go on TikTok and say something like, well, I know I'm no spring chicken anymore, but I'm certainly more virtuous than those Jezebels Samuel's been running around with in Providence all these years. Oh, Samuel, why don't you just come and get a Southern lady? You've been with them Yankee girls too long. But yeah, I was just thinking like, Every time I see something like that or I think about the fact that there are probably girls bragging on TikTok about their ability to cook, I think of this Maddox article from 2015. I'm tired of people who can't cook. Cooking food is so easy, even a kid can do it. And kids are the dumbest people on earth. I also wanted to quote something he wrote in the article that accompanies the video. There's nothing to cooking. Like I said in my math article, math doesn't suck, you do. It's the act of following instructions. You have to follow instructions to log into Facebook, tie your shoelaces and drive a car, but cooking is somehow too complex to master. The three or four steps you have to take to complete a meal is beyond you. Tell you what, why don't you just eat then? <laughs> yeah, that's Maddox in a nutshell. Um, so it's, it's a little... Uh, like when I was younger, I appreciated Maddox a lot more. Nowadays, it's a little, you know, but that's probably because his influence has spread. And so we've seen carbon copies of him from time to time. You know what I mean? So, and I'm sure, I don't know, I guess Maddox's influence would probably be like Bill Hicks or something like that. You know what I mean? Who, you know, I also think that maybe Alex Jones is secretly Bill Hicks, right? I mean, that, that's my favorite bit shoot conspiracy bopping around right now. That might be an old one, but I just heard it recently and thought that was funny. But yeah, I wanted to point that out because I rem I, I've, I'm old enough to see the progression to like a woman or like a trad wife LARPing girl or like red pill woman like bragging about her ability to cook on TikTok um, for I guess like red pill male attention. <laughs> um, I'm old enough to know the origin of that. It's like, it started out where it was like cutesy to brag about your inability to cook. And actually like Maddox, I think is like addressing that because this came out in like 2015. And then that sort of morphed into, gosh, adulting is so hard, which you guys probably remember that trend a lot more for people to be like, uh, adulting, what even is adulting? You know, like that. And then now we've come full circle or like we've gone back to base where it's like, it is no longer funny or cutesy to brag about your inability to have basic life skills, right? And it's just, I don't know, just fun and interesting. Now, in more important and potentially good news, atomic bombs might not be as destructive as we've been led to believe by all of the media we, that's been pushed on us since Lyndon B. Johnson, right? Um, <laughs> so I, someone in my life, okay, recommended, and yes, it was a man, obviously, uh, recommended this to me. So this is an interview with General Crawford F. Sams, who served um, in the Army in the California National Guard and was also involved in, I guess, the radiation surveying uh, after Hiroshima and Nagasaki and worked with the like Atomic Bomb Commission at that time to see like the delayed effects of radiation and stuff like that. And he said something very interesting in this interview. Um, 
So I'm just going to highlight this one paragraph, and then I highly recommend um, you guys read at least through this portion of the transcript. Um, the other part of the interview is more about his life, but you know, he, there's this big chunk about the atomic bomb and Hiroshima and his work there. So, quote, you see, it wasn't Bing, like the publicity here said. A bomb went off and a city disappeared. No such thing happened. That was the propaganda for deterrent. They're talking about after that. One bomb and away goes Chicago, you know? All you've got to do is look in Life magazine and whatnot back in 45, 46, and so on. What I'm trying to do is to show how it's like in the war with one B-17. Well, you have to keep your feet on the ground. As near as we could figure then, about 21,000 people died in 36 hours as a result of being trapped and burned and so on. It's like those who died in the 23 earthquake and subsequent fire. Then, as I say, I set the six months deadline for anybody who had been there, even though they went away and so on, and put a deadline on deaths from delayed radiation effects as far as it takes six months or so for deaths from, what do they call it? Delayed effects. What he's referring to is that during World War II in Japan, right? So there was a need. This sounds crazy to us today because we've America's always been at war my entire life. So this probably sounds crazy to millennials. But actually, at, during World War II, they had a desire to stop the war. I know, crazy, right? Um, so they wanted to deter further war. And this has been done before where basically they run like, like you run a propaganda campaign that makes the destruction look worse than it is so that it scares people into surrender and just stops the war out of fear, right? And and you can use fear to get people to do anything, really. Like, you can get people to start a war with fear and you can get people to end a war with fear, right? So that's what he's referring to. So basically, all of this um, kind of Lyndon B. Johnson style, like, uh, you know, horror of the atomic bomb and nuclear weapons um, was actually just perhaps a propaganda campaign. And actually, if you read more in this transcript, um, you'll see that he mentions that actually like explosives, like regular bombs are per like perhaps more destructive than the atom bomb, right? Which is a big thing because the atom bomb has been used to like that propaganda instills fear in people, right? And you could see that with like duck and cover during the Cold War. I think for millennials, the narrative that we get more, like post Cold War narrative basically, um, has been, you know, doomsday clock. And it's sort of combined with like climate change or what they used to call global warming, which was not too long ago. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not that old. All right. <laughs> all right. I mean, for perverts, I'm extremely age, uh, ancient, but I think for like regular people, I'm not that old. Okay. So I like to make that joke since I'm over 30 now. I don't know. But yeah, like, um, so, you know, th I think for millennials, again, like the narrative has been that combination of like, oh, like the world is so terrible, like nukes and climate change and like the world's going to end. And, you know, like just just all these like very apocalyptic type messages. Right. And that's where a lot of like when you see people who are like doomer, zoomer, like black pill, like, um, you know, other variations of that, like really nihilistic, depressed, pessimistic people. Right. Like, I think that is at least one origin of why people have that mindset these days, right? It's the really the propaganda, whether it's true or not, right? It does instill this sense of um, apocalyptic, you know, fear, right? Um, and so something like this transcript with this, you know, general who was there in the thick of it, like, he also explains, like, People who died of like getting in a car accident, like anybody who died, and you probably are familiar with this with, um, you know, the, the coof, right, um, that we just experienced, um, where anyone who died, it was attributed to the bomb. It was attributed to the atomic bomb. So even if you died in a car accident, they attributed it to dying of radiation or, or the bomb or something like that. Yeah. Sound familiar? I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think that goes without saying. So very interesting read. Um, just wanted to share with you guys because it is, um, 
you know, it is kind of positive news in a way. Um, and I just want people to have less fear, right? Nothing annoys me more on the internet. Well, other than perverts and sex trafficking, nothing irks me more. <laughs> well, it, it does a lot more than irk me. It devastates me, actually. But, you know, as far as things that just annoy me on the internet, like the number one thing is the pessimism and like the nihilism and just anything to do with dating and pills. If it's like red pill dating, black pill dating, blue pill dating, whatever pill it is. The only one I, I do like the white pill. I think white pill is probably what I would identify with at this point. But you know, it just it just annoys me. And honestly, Americans need to stop taking so many pills if you catch my drift. Okay. Um, yeah, and delete your TikTok. Can't again, I'm going to say that until TikTok is dead. Until ev- I will <laughs> in every video that I upload from now on, I'm going to tell everyone to delete their TikTok until there are no Americans on TikTok. Okay. Like it is not good for you. All right. Well, love you guys. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your week and I will be back uh, sometime next week. All right. 